So welcome everyone to the Fearless Footprint Talk Show, episode number one. I am your host, Kelly Elizabeth Scott, and I am a leadership and wellness coach helping ambitious women dreamers live, lead, and be well. I help you create the life and the body of work that both makes you come alive and is the footprint you wish to leave in the world. We are here for the Fearless Footprint Talk Show, a weekly live Blab and podcast that takes place live every Wednesday at 7 Central on Blab. If you can't make it live, you can always catch the recording in the podcast section of iTunes. Throughout this talk show, we are celebrating the secret sauce of amazing women leaders, dreamers, and footprint leavers who are embracing all that they are and all that they have learned in service to the world and those around them. We talk about our lives, our work, our dreams, and the journey, challenges and all, to where we are now. Tonight, I am joined by business mentor and success coach, Lacey Craig, to talk specifically about how taking back our time with focused and efficient action can give us a few more hours in a day. If you are new around here, sure to click the link in the chat box to join our community, the Fearless Footprint Society. It's completely free, and when you join, you'll get reminders for this weekly talk show, inspiration throughout the week, and the chance to check in, celebrate with us, get support, and dream even bigger. So let's go ahead and dive right into tonight's call and officially welcome Lacey. I am so honored and so happy to have you here tonight. I'm so happy to be here. I thank you so much. Yay. So I'm going to do a brief introduction and explain why I am so excited to chat with you. And then I'll pass it over to you for a little bit more of an in-depth introduction, if that's okay. Very cool. So Lacey is a business mentor and success coach for high-performing women entrepreneurs. She has an MS in mental health counseling as well as an MBA. Lacey has worked as a therapist and the director of a $45 million a year nonprofit and is now the proud owner of two successful online businesses. It's Lacey's mission to help other women build and grow their own service-based businesses that truly light them up and give them the freedom and impact they've always desired. Lacey has a gift for honing in on your message and your niche and tying it beautifully together with killer mindset work, serious business strategy, and focused execution that totally transforms your business and your life. I'm excited to have Lacey joining me tonight because we are going to get into the nitty gritty of how getting clear on what actions are worth taking can give us back some much needed control of our time. Lacey is perfect for tonight's topic because she is a huge proponent of working smarter and not harder. Lacey, I would love for you to tell us some more about yourself and the work that you're doing in the world. Um, no, that was like a great intro. <laughs> like, I want to like clap. That was like the best <laughs> intro. <laughs> it was you're all like, about you, so that's why it's so great. <laughs> well, no, you're you're so good at like picking out words that I would use, right, or like ways that I would describe it. So I really appreciate that, and I really appreciate you doing that. So thank you. So yes, that was a beautiful introduction. Totally sums up kind of what I'm about, what I love to do. Um, my things are like mindset, strategy, and execution. I think those are like the three key points to success and the three things that we need to be doing in our business. Um, that's kind of what I help my clients do every day, get their mindset in check, get a strategy behind their business, and then execute it consistently. So I'm so happy to be talking about this topic because I think um, it flows very easily into those things, right? Because if we're not being careful with our time, we're probably not putting together a great strategy and we're definitely not executing it efficiently. Mm, absolutely, you are right in that. So so let's start with, with mindset, strategy, and execution. How did you even come to realize that those three things were so important for a business? Yeah, so like mindset has always been huge for me, right? As like mm -hmm. a former therapist, that's always been something that I've really concentrated on. Um, and I really think that that's the foundation for everything in our business. Um, we watched an amazing podcast or watch. I listened to it. <laughs> and the the woman on it was Dana Wild, and she was saying, like, if you put a hundred business owners next to each other, they would all have different ways that they got there, right? Like they'd all have different strategies for success. They would all have the same mindset. Mm. And I thought that was so powerful. And think about that um as it relates to having mindset as the foundation. Right. Like if you don't have that, it doesn't matter what strategy you put together. It doesn't matter how much you execute. You have to have that first strategy is next, right? There are a hundred ways to get somewhere, but you have to know where you're going. Absolutely. So being really clear on like what you're showing up for, how you're showing up for it, and then executing it, I think is actually the most challenging part for a lot of entrepreneurs, right? Like some of us like would rather sit and create strategy or work on our mindset than like get there and do the tough work, right? But 
execution becomes easier if you have these first two things in place. Execution is really hard if you don't have those two. So for me, I've just noticed that that's when I'm like in a flow in my business, when I'm on a roll, when I'm experiencing success, it's always because those three things are firmly in place. Mm, I love that. And I think especially with execution, it is very difficult. Um, But I think having that mindset is what's going to help you stay consistent with the execution. Because I know for me, I'm the kind of person I'm like, I just want to do it once. I'll do it once, take that action, then it's in place. But then you realize in your business, no, you got to do all this stuff over and over and (laughs) over again. And so that's where the mindset really comes into play because you've got to get yourself ready for it every time and love it and enjoy it and, and be able to find a way to enjoy the journey and not just the destination because it isn't just a one and done. Absolutely. And you have to, you know, have that like inner belief that, you can make it happen, right? Like that's so powerful as an entrepreneur. Like if I don't believe that any of my strategy or execution is going to be successful, well, it's doomed. Why are you going to do it? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So let's go ahead and take it way back uh, and talk about your story a little bit. I want to know how you got here. I know you have an MS in mental health counseling and an MBA. You've run a $45 million a year nonprofit. And then how did you get here to two online businesses? Um, so yeah, I went to school. I got my bachelor's in psychology. I thought for sure I was taking the therapist track. Like I just thought that was it. Right. Um, I became a therapist and I realized that was not in fact it. (laughs) I, there are a lot of things I liked about therapy, but, um, you know, it was just really challenging. My first clients, um, were all substance abuse addicts and they had dual diagnoses. So substance abuse with another high level diagnosis, Um, And they were all court ordered to six months of inpatient rehab. So it was super intense work. And um, I think I just kind of like dove into the deep end of the pool too fast um, and got burnt out really, really quickly and just felt like there, there was pieces of it that I loved, but I just was like, this is not for me as a whole. Like I couldn't do this for 30 years. Mm -hmm. So I ended up working um, at a nonprofit that I loved. We um, focused mostly on early education Um, We also worked with children that were in protective services and foster care, and it was really powerful, and I liked a lot of the work. Um, But, you know, I just, like, felt like something was missing still. Like, I'd always had this calling to be an entrepreneur. Like, when people would be like, oh, what do you want? Like, what's your long-term goal? I'd be like, oh, I just want to, you know, start my own business. And they'd be like, oh, that's awesome, and what? And I'd be like, yeah, I I just want to start my own business. (laughs) I'm just going to do it. (laughs) Yeah, like, I just actually want to be in charge, right? Like I want to own my own business. So it was funny because I never knew exactly what that looked like, but I knew I wanted that. But I got a lot of feedback around that time. Like, oh, wow, you have your dream job. You're so young. Like that must be so amazing. And I just, you know, really was stuck in this kind of like mode between feeling like I should be really grateful and I should figure out how to be happy here. Or like I should quit and like pursue this other thing that I'm feeling called to do, these other dreams that I'm feeling called to create. And, you know, like when you're in in decision mode like that, I think the universe kind of will like drop you breadcrumbs and then eventually kind of like, you know, knock you over the head with a frying pan. And you're not um, listening. <laughs> yeah, like start paying attention. It's just going to keep getting like harder. Um, and, you know, I basically got my frying pan. I had um, an ethical disagreement with um, our board chair and just left. Um, and that was my, like totally my sign. Like I needed that or I would, I would probably still be there. Right. Like I needed that to say like, it's time to step up to the plate. So from there I went, I was in the process of getting my MBA at the time. So I finished my MBA and then I started another online business, which was like vintage new and used clothing resale. It was so fun. I loved it so much. Um, and, and I, why, why that, why vintage, <laughs> you know, honestly, it just kind of like, it's a long story, but like, as things fall into your lap, that just like showed up for me. Right. And I just knew nothing about it, but decided I would figure it out. I just felt like I'm resourceful enough. I definitely don't want to work for someone else again. Like I'm just going to make this happen. And I did, and it was great. Um, I still have that business, but I've kind of passed along most of it to a family member, which has really been like so cool and such a gift and like so special for me. Um, That's so amazing to, to be yeah. able to pass something on that you've built, right? That you've yeah. built it to a place where you can pass it on is, is it's amazing. Yeah. So that was really fun. And, you know, I still love having my hands in that a little bit, but um, 
even with that, I still felt like there's something else here, right? Um, but I became obsessed with online business because I was like, this is like amazing. This is the best time to start an online business. Like we are so, so lucky that we live in this era and that this is possible for us. So um, what I really decided was like business coaching was the way that I could combine all of the things I love. Like I'm obsessed with business, marketing, strategy, all that. I really like the mindset piece, the pieces that I enjoyed from therapy. And the only place that I really found where I could combine all of those was business coaching. So that's kind of what led to a lit up life and why I like have made this my full-time gig. <laughs> oh, it's such, it's such a wonderful story. And I love just kind of knowing at the beginning, I mean, I'm going to start my own business at some point. I don't really know what it's going to be, but just like knowing it was there and that that passion was within you um, to create, I think is, is really wonderful. Totally. So my grandfather was a serial entrepreneur. Mm. Um, and one of my favorite stories is that someone had like come into one of his businesses and they were like unhappy with something. And, you know, just as people do say, said something to him, like, well, I, I don't like your answer. Like, I want to talk to your supervisor. And he said to them, well, you're going to have to talk to God. <laughs> and I always remember being like, that's what I want. Like, I want a business where God is who I'm answering to, not anyone else, right? Like, I get to make my decisions. I get to, like, hold it in my integrity. And, like, I get to decide from that place. Mm, I love that. I really like that. <laughs> um, I, it's it's just so great. It's such a such a good story. So, what has been your definition of success? Your big why? That beautiful dream that that keeps you going? That has been keeping you going? Um, I think it's twofold. Um, impact is so important to me. Like, if I could pick one word that like sums up why I'm here, I feel like it's impact. Um, I feel like. So, what does that mean? Right, like the best way to impact for me is to like help other women after their dreams create their version of impact like I feel like for me if I want to create impact the best way to do that is to help other people create impact because then it's a ripple effect so that's totally for me is my big why is like not just creating my own impact but like helping other people spread their light and their message to the world um, because that's what we need right is more women stepping into their power more women sharing their message more women sharing their light so for me that's totally my why. And then also I think the other piece of that is I just think corporate America has gotten insane. What do you mean? Like it's just no longer a healthy environment for people to live and exist in, right? Like the amount of stress and pressure and personalities and politics and the like lack of loyalty that, you know, exists between companies and their employees. And I'm speaking very broadly. This is not everywhere, obviously. But I just think that it's like so interesting to see that like, I feel like a pendulum is almost swinging where like people can't keep up at this pace. They can't keep up with this pressure. And so helping women see that there is another option. Like you don't have to be miserable all the time. You don't have to live in this environment that humans are not meant to function well in, right? Like you can build your own business. You can create the lifestyle that you desire. I think that's really possible, really powerful and part of my why too. I talked with Corey Thompson last week and she was in corporate America and her I love that you mentioned it's it's busy and it's crazy and we're so stressful. So many people who are in corporate America and her kind of frying pan uh, that hit her upside the head was that she literally drove uh-huh. to her garage. And it, it's such this, it, like literally through it. And it's so crazy, but you're so right that there are so many people, so many women that are very stressed in corporate America and it's a pace that we can't always keep up with. Um, and so it is wonderful that we have this option to do it differently, that we get to design mm-hmm. something differently. Yeah. It's about the option, the that we right? Really like, want to do. yeah, and your open company works for you and whatever. I don't think everyone's meant to be an entrepreneur. Like, I'm so good with that, but it's about like knowing that there is another possibility for you, and that and that you could do it, which ties into the first piece you said of women needing to step into their power and step into sharing their story and their roles that they could have as a leader and and you know as someone who really makes this big impact and so it's just needing to know that op- option exists and that you can do it if you want to you know that you are able to step into that i had a conversation with someone today actually a- about that similar thing about why aren't women you know stepping even more into that and it's so much of it is, is fear that pops up or this doubt or i'm not blank enough you know always something 
we, we have to tell ourselves, which ties beautifully into mindset work, which is that first piece of the foundation that you do. And so I want to talk a little bit about that. Um, fears, insecurities, doubts, when those things pop up, what are some of those immediate tools that we can go to to say, no, I'm not going to listen to that. I'm going to keep following the dream, the passion, the option that I Yeah, have. I think it's obviously number one is like staying connected to that, right? Mm-hmm. You know, I think it's kind of like, I read something the other day and she said it so eloquently. Um, my friend Celeste Frenette, and I can't remember how she said it, but she was basically saying like, my mission or my message is bigger than any like missteps or fear. Like you always, like that always has to be the bigger thing. Um, so I think that's number one is just like always connecting back to that. Like when I'm feeling that like fear, like I have to be like, well, I want to impact a crap ton of women, right? Like and I want them to spread their impact. So like <laughs> I either get to sit here in fear or I get to decide that like my mission is bigger than this like stuff that I'm going through and like step up to the plate. But then also just like practical things. Like we have to work on our mindset every day. Like are we showing up for ourselves and creating like the best environment possible? Like are we meditating? Are we getting clear on our goals? Are we doing – affirmations that program our brain in the way that we need it to function. Um, I try to think a lot about like the version of me that I want to be like the best version of myself. Like what are the beliefs she has? And then how do I like program those into my brain? Right. Cause our subconscious doesn't filter for accuracy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> which is amazing, which is why so many of the beliefs that we have right now aren't necessarily true beliefs. They were really the meanings that we made of an experience, oh not gosh, the context exactly. of the experience itself, which is fascinating. Exactly. It, it totally blows my mind that we could have made a meaning about an experience that happened years ago, and it's completely controlling every decision we make from here on out, but that it had not that much to do with what actually happened, you know, and that we can actually change that, and we can rewrite some of these these Totally, and the thing is to remember, too, is that, like, you know, entrepreneurship is basically like the best course in self-development you could ever take. <laughs> so being open for that, I think, is the, the most important piece. So when something's triggering you or when fears are coming up, not like deciding they're unimportant or trying to push through it, but being like, what is, what is here? What's the story that I'm telling myself? What do I need to learn from this? And then like actually doing the work, right? Journaling, getting support, showing up doing your affirmations, whatever it is, but like realizing when things trigger you that it's time to do the work. It's not time to like ignore it, I think is the most important part. I completely with, agree with you. One of my favorite sayings is curiosity and compassion rather than judgment. So it's when a fear pops up rather than judging ourselves for having a fear or a behavior that we do that we don't like, whatever it might be, just getting curious and being really compassionate with ourselves and just saying, well, why, why is it here? Why am I doing this? Why is this thought popping up? What is it trying to teach me or how is it trying to help me? Because uh, one of the things that I think really changed things for me was realizing that every behavior has a positive intention behind it. So at one point in our lives, this behavior came away to keep us love or safe or like we belong. And so it's really positive intention that we need to honor because love, safety, and belonging are human needs that, that we all have. And so it's just how can I honor that intention with a different, more fulfilling yes. behavior? Oh, I love how you explain forward. that. That's so good. Wonderful. Okay, so talking about fear, I want to take it a little more personal, uh, and I want to know what challenges have been your biggest and your most difficult to face in growing your two online businesses, either something you expect or, or something you Ooh, didn't. So good. Um, so both of mine, I would say, are like primarily mindset related too, right? Um, the first is kind of just like learning when to push myself and when to be gentle with myself, I think has been, um, a huge challenge. I'm like a recovering perfectionist. Um, mm. and I feel like, you know, how in, um, Alcoholics Anonymous, they say like, once you're an alcoholic, you always are, you're just in recovery. I feel like perfectionism is very much the same way. Like once a per you're a perfectionist, you always are, you're just like in recovery. So like being very careful not to get triggered in perfectionist mode. Um, I think there's a lot of positive things to being a perfectionist. So one of mine has been like perfectionism is positive until it slows me down. So if I'm getting slowed down by it, right? Like if I'm not performing, if I'm not showing up, if I'm spending five hours working on something, which really goes into our topic, you know, then it needs to go. 
But there's also other times where like, I just need to be gentle with myself. I don't need to be a high performer 24 seven, right? Like I need to slow down. I need to do some self care and like finding that balance has been a really interesting challenge for me in building both of these businesses. I would love to hear more about that because I think that's a, a challenge that a lot of people have finding that balance of when do I need to give myself a kick in the butt to get it moving and keep going or when I really need to throw in that compassion and that gentleness. So how have you learned to navigate that? Are there triggers that have popped up or just things yeah, you definitely. have in place? So um, definitely like reminding myself like perfection is po perfectionism is positive until it slows me down. So really checking in with myself, feeling into like, am I really getting slowed down here? Like, do I need to just like get stuff done? Um, I think somebody just commented done is better than perfect. And I totally, totally agree with that. Um, so I think just like the awareness is the first thing that I always do. What definitely triggers me or what is the challenge for me around this is that I love what I do, which is like a blessing and a curse, right? So it's amazing 90% of the time, but that 10% where I should really be slowing down, but I'm like, so like, but I love this and I want to get it done. I really, really have to step back. Sometimes that means that I check in with someone that loves and cares about me. And I say like, hey, I'm feeling like I should push through this. Be a mirror for me. Like, am I being crazy, right? Like, help me out here. Um, and sometimes, you know, they can stand there for you and hold a mirror up to you, whether it's a mentor, a friend, a partner, whatever it is, and be like, listen, you've been working 10 hours a day for four days. Like, it's time to slow it down. Or they can be like, you seem really excited about this. You don't seem you know, overly stressed, like go for it. So like having people that can like hold that mirror up to you when you're feeling like you don't trust it at first, that was definitely what I did in the beginning. Now I'm much more tuned in. So I don't need that quite as much. Um, but for me, it's like, if I'm feeling like positive, excited energy, I feel good about it. If I'm feeling like a need is unfulfilled. I don't know if that makes sense, but like I'm trying to fulfill a need by getting this thing done. Not like I'm just excited about the process, but I'm trying to get to like it's not yeah, fueling like it's, you the it's right. It's really way. like what yeah. space I'm living in, right? I can kind of tell like is it time to mm -hmm. back off or is it time to keep pushing? So I'm like all about the hustle, but I'm definitely not about the hustle when it's hard. <laughs> mm, I like that. I think that's a new way of putting it, which I know I actually really like that. Um, there were two things that you said specifically that I want to touch on. Uh, one of them, which is is having the people around you that you can go to to mirror something back to you. And I think that ties into what you said earlier about kind of setting up conditions for inevitable success, right? You're setting up things around you that make doing what you want to do and getting where you want to go a lot easier. And one of those is definitely having the right people around you, having the people that will be able to mirror it back to you without any of their map or their world getting in that way, right? Without them infusing anything that they're feeling or believing or thinking onto you. And so I think that's such a good example of, of setting yourself up, you know, these conditions for success is really surrounding yourself with the right people who can do that for you. And I also right? loved that that's you mentioned- challenge, being willing to let them uh, support you. That's the other challenge for sure. Yeah. Receiving, that is certainly a difficult one. Um, and you also mentioned um, um, that you kind of can sometimes get in that trap where you love what you do so much that you want to get all of these exciting things done and it's so much fun. Uh, but if you don't ever give yourself a little bit of, of downtime, then it becomes a little bit too crazy. And I really like that you mentioned this because I actually just wrote about this the other day because I had that sort of experience. I just did all these things I was so excited about. I love my work. I love doing it. Content creation, writing, these are things that fuel me up so much. But after doing it all week, I, I got to a point on Friday and I hadn't really given myself much self-care. It was really all go all the time, a whole bunch of growth, all of these things that totally stretched me. I was doing them. I was excited about it. It felt good. And then Friday hits and it was like every email I opened, I was comparing the writer of the email to myself. Every Instagram post I looked at, I was comparing them to myself. It was anywhere I looked comparison was all that was creeping in my, into my head. And that was kind of a, a sign for me. Something has to stop, right? I, I think I've grown too much in too short of a time that now I'm starting to freak out a little bit. So I need space and I need a white space and, and, and space to kind of think about myself a little bit without 
being bombarded by all of those. Yes. So I like oh my gosh, that totally that. makes sense. Like instead of being like, oh, this means I suck. You're like, this means time for me to slow down. Yeah. Right. This means I've done so much recently that I'm 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 I've reached my capacity for this present moment, and I'm going to go ahead and give myself yes, self care before I come at it again. Love it. So I want to get right into our our topic for the night: working smarter and not harder. Really being able to take back our time with focused and efficient action. And I I want to know from your own words: what does it mean to to take back your time and to to work smarter and not yeah, harder? Yeah, I think um. It's so interesting because I just had shared this article in my group. It was about um, decision fatigue. And um, it was it was quite long, but one of the things that they mention on it is that there are some things that we're really good at resisting when we're in decision fatigue, um, like maybe spending money or um, certain things that like are easier to resist. And then there are certain things that are really hard to resist when we're in decision fatigue. So like some of them are taking a nap, watching TV, surfing the web, or getting on social media. And what I found super interesting is all the things that they listed that were hard to um, ignore or not do when we're in decision fatigue mode are all things that are present for entrepreneurs that are working from home all the time, right? Like we can always take a break, take a nap, turn on TV, surf the web. Like our jobs are on Facebook in some ways. So um, for me, yeah, taking back our time means taking away those distractions and like actually owning our time um, so that we're showing up for that, right? Like I'm not showing up if I have the TV on and I have Facebook on and I'm whatever and I'm trying to create content. Like I'm just not showing up. So taking back our time for me means taking away all those distractions and putting like all of my mental energy toward the thing in front of me. I love that. And I think it's so important. One of my favorite tools that I learned just a couple of months ago, but it has totally changed things for me, is batching. And I learned it from Katie Denowden. It's so great. And it just means batching together groups of activities that have similar functions. So for example, writing your, your email content for a newsletter or writing an Instagram post or writing a Facebook post, something that is writing and content creation, putting you know content and your thoughts out there, put it all on the same day. For example, for me, Mondays, I create all of my content. This past Monday, I got four newsletters done because it was the only thing I had to think about. It was just writing and sharing. And then you could lump together coaching that you're doing, any sort of thing where you're talking to somebody, maybe you're conversing, but just really putting these different things together that are similar that use kind of your similar part of your brain and so that you can just stay focused for a longer period of time. Um, when Katie was talking about it, she shared how the more you switch between different tasks, the less you're actually getting done during the day because it takes your brain a certain amount of time to switch from one task to the other. It's like decision fatigue again, right? Like we're just like fatiguing yeah. our brains constantly and we're so shocked when they don't perform for us. <laughs> You're like, why have I not got anything yeah. done? I worked so all day. I used day. to do that or used to not do that at the beginning of my coaching business. Like I would just leave Monday through Friday like wide open and anybody could schedule whenever they wanted, right? It was a mess because what would happen mm -hmm. is I would have like an hour block here, an hour block here, maybe two hours here. And I just could not. I mean like – performer but my brain just next. could not make that switch constantly <laughs> and now I have Mondays and Fridays where I don't do client calls I just work on my business Wednesday Thursday Friday or Tuesday Wednesday Thursday I work in my business and that has changed my life <laughs> to say like, which is an understatement that no <laughs> I see I totally understand I totally believe you because that's how I've organized it so much easier to wake up and be like okay I'm just doing this or I'm just doing this part and it, 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 yeah. it gosh it makes it so it also, much so like, much show easier. Is more powerful so I wanna... in everything you're doing like I'm a much more powerful coach now because I'm in when I'm coaching like I'm on for whatever the six hours each day like as opposed to like you know trying to like be 10 different things each day such a good point. So I want to switch it and go the opposite. And so let's talk about working harder and not working smarter. And so give me an, an example of that. We talked a little bit about just, just then with decision fatigue, 
But give me a, another example, if you can, of what it looks like to be working harder and not smarter, and then maybe a tip or two that we yeah, can go ahead and Yeah, I think like that. a lot of things that new entrepreneurs do is just like not listening into themselves, which causes them to work harder. So like, for example, say like there are about a million social media platforms at this point. There are a ton of different types of content you can put out, right? Like what feels good to you? Not what is someone telling you to do or what someone's saying, like you have to send out five newsletters a week or what's the thing that feels good to you and then keep showing up and doing that. When you're working harder is when you're trying to fit yourself into this box that doesn't work for you. So, you know, say you're not, a great writer that's a challenge for you well then like are you sending out newsletters where you're on video right like are you getting on video all the time are you periscoping whatever say it's the opposite let's not spend all this time trying to like get you good at video let's do what you're good at like if you're great at putting out amazing written content spend time doing that so i think it's like figuring out which areas you're operating at your highest level of achievement in or like your zone of genius in maybe even your zone of excellence in, and then doing those as opposed to like trying to like push through and work so hard in these areas that are just not your thing. I love that. One of the things that has changed it really for me was I, I like to call it my secret sauce. So figuring out what my secret sauce is, the things that I am really good at, the things I like to do, um, and being able to tie in like my gifts and my stories and experiences, all that into it and putting that foot forward. And when I first started my business, it wasn't like that. I followed everyone and I wanted to see what others were doing and how they were doing it. And I just wanted to learn from them. I am a continuous learner at the core and that's not a bad thing. Um, and to an extent, it was really, really great. But then after a while, it was running around trying to do a hundred of different things just because I'm so said I should. Um, and so I love that saying, okay, no, let's tap into ourselves and figure out what, what we want to do. Not only what am I good at? Is it writing? Is it video? What's the easiest for me? But also what kind of business do I want to build, right? Like how, in 5, 10, 15 years, how do I want to be putting out content? And how do I want to be getting followers and connecting with my audience and setting some of those foundations up now and getting to think long term, really, what do you, what do you want to create? Yeah, totally. And I think also like giving yourself like space in all of that, right? Like, you know, space to figure out what mm -hmm. feels good, like try out different things, you know, do whatever, like, you know, lights you up and figure it out along the way, like not putting so much pressure on yourself. Like you were saying, like doing things because someone said you should try things and then decide, right? Like not the other way around. Mm -hmm. Oh, I totally agree. One of my absolute favorite tools, I say it all the time, is to unsubscribe and unfollow. And when you're getting in that point, like like I was, where you're just trying to do 100 different things because everyone said it, I had to cut them all out. I was like, all right, I'm unfollowing on Instagram. I love you. You're great. And I know you have a ton of value for me. But, but right now, I've got to figure out what I like. Um, and I also like that you say, hey, just try different things out. Like, you don't know if you're going to like it. So give it a shot. See how it goes. And then decide, is this for me or is it not for me? And it's totally okay if it's not for you because there's another thing that Yeah, I always say like action breeds clarity. And I think that's another time waster, right? We spend a lot of unfocused time trying to get clear as opposed to just taking action and getting clarity through action. We spend too, too, far too much time brewing on things, ruminating, trying to decide whatever instead of just taking the action toward it. And when we take the action, what is something that we can do to make sure we are checking in with ourselves to say, how does this feel? Do I want to keep taking the same action? What is something we can do to make sure that yeah, we Yeah, I think it's in? just like, how how am I feeling at any given moment, right? Like, how like is my vibe high? Like, am I excited about it? Is this something that's like, you know, this is kind of my word, but is it lighting me up? If I'm feeling like mm -hmm. a lot of push, a lot of struggle, a lot of... um you know, low vibe energy, like it just might not be my thing. But I think the important thing is to remember to always like distinguish between like what is fear and what is something that's just not your thing. Um, I think that's a thing that comes up for entrepreneurs, right? A lot of people are like, oh, that's not my thing, but it like really they're just scared of it. So also yeah. checking in with yourself, like what's not feeling good about it? Is it just like for me personally, actually like Periscope's a great example of this. Like I really wanted to make Periscope work. Like I tried it a lot. I was consistent. I showed up for weeks on end. It just wasn't my thing. Right. But like, I really had yeah. to say to myself, is it just because I'm scared? Like every time I hit the, you know, live broadcast button, 
Am I just feeling <laughs> scared or is this just not how I best connect with my audience? Um, for me, it just wasn't how I best connected, but I think it would be easy to have fallen into a fear trap there. So always checking in like, is it high vibe? Is it low vibe? If it's low vibe, is it fear or is it just not my thing? <laughs> Gosh, it really is so important. And one of the things that I noticed personally for me is that I won't necessarily feel a ton of of traditional fear towards something, but I'll feel it. I'll feel it manifest as resistance. And so it'll just be like, yeah, I just, yeah, I just, I just, I'm feeling a lot of resistance towards this, and I can't really explain it. And I don't call it fear, but I call it resistance. And recently, um, I have noticed that a lot of that resistance is because there is something in. X, whether it's I'm resistant towards a person or I'm feeling resistance towards a platform, there's something in that thing that I want to be doing, but I'm not doing. And so whether it's, oh, for example, Facebook, right? It's okay, maybe I, I want to be getting more visible and I see all these people doing that on Facebook. So I'll like feel this resistance towards Facebook, a little bit of fear that will really just tell me, hey, you want to be getting more visible and putting yourself out there. There'll be certain people that I'll start to like notice thoughts will get a little more negative towards them. And I'm like, what the heck is that? Like, why am I being judgmental of them? And then I realize, oh, it's because she just did X, Y, and Z and really put herself out there. And, and I kind of want to be doing that too. And so it's having to get really honest with yourself and say, like, is this fear resistance? Is this something I don't want to do? And what does it mean? Like, really, what yes, does it mean? That's so true. I me? have like, I mean, this is like a personal rule. This isn't necessarily a recommendation, but I have a personal rule that if I'm scared of something, I will do it. There is nothing mm -hmm. that I will get scared of and not do because for me, like, I want to know always like, is this my thing or is it not? But I never want to be in a position of fear, which is why I pushed through Periscope for a while, right? Like I want to know that like, if I'm scared of something, I'm trying it. Um, so like whatever I'm feeling resistance to, I will do it. Like, because that's just what works for me. That's how I push through. That's why it's not like a, a recommendation for everyone. We all work through <laughs> things in different ways, right? But for me, if I'm scared, I'm doing it because I never want to be in that place. So these things that, that, that whether it's something like you just said, where you're like, I'm scared of it, which means I'm doing it, whether it's something like that, or it's something that we know that we should be doing or something we know that we really want to be doing, but we're just not doing it. We don't feel like doing it or, or whatever excuse comes into our heads. How do we get ourselves to go ahead and take that action? And then more importantly, consistently I love that. Someone that in my action. group just asked that this week. They were like, we all know how to do a lot of things, but we still don't do it. So, yeah. um, <laughs> and I think, you know, I'm kind of going to go back to like habits and mental decision fatigue, whatever you want to call it. Right. I think so often, like we really have to be protective of our mental energy and we're just not in our society. Right. Like that's just not we're not accustomed to that. We're not trained for that. Everything is like a giant process nowadays, which I know is kind of like silly, but right. Like I just, we just changed cable providers and I swear that took like, like hours of my time. Right. So we're not being protective of our mental energy. Like everything we do is complicated or takes a lot of time. So I think, um, what happens is we get burnt out and then we don't have the energy to push ourselves to do the things we know we should be doing. Um, and we're also diminished. Our mental capacity is diminished. So we're not making good choices always too. Like for example, food is a great example of people know how they should eat, but they don't do it. Right. Well, they're fatigued. Like when you're in a fatigued state, if it's like a donut or an apple, you're probably going to pick the donut. I mean, even if you're not in a fatigue state, you know, the donut, right? But <laughs> <laughs> like, I will pick the donut. So I think it's kind of about <laughs> being really protective of your mental energy and being really smart at noticing where you expend it and where you allow yourself to expend it. Like, so we were talking about time blocking. So doing it in the right ways, creating habits, like habits are a great way to lower mental fatigue, right? Because you're no longer thinking about things that are just like second nature for you. Like working out is a great example. You know, when you're working out consistently, it's like no thing, right? Like you're just, you do it, you do it. Like you throw on your running shoes or whatever and you're, you're done. When you get out of that habit and then you try to get back into it, it takes so much mental energy to show up for that every day. So what I really encourage my clients to do is like set great habits 
and then set boundaries with their mental energy. Um, like for me, I really try to set boundaries in a lot of ways. Like I have a rule with my husband, like I don't want to pick where we're going to dinner unless I have like a really big craving for something or have a say, like I need to pass off some decisions because I make decisions all day long in my business. I help my clients make decisions. I facilitate decisions, right? So for me, like, I don't care what kind of vacuum cleaner we buy. I don't care where we're going to dinner. Like, those are just some things that I've had to really give up to create more space and clarity for me in other areas. I think that's really cool because it's a unique way of, of taking back your time, right? It's kind of this, this yeah. indirect way of taking it back and picking which actions you're going to actually take. And you're like, well, I'm going to do all these actions with my business. Those are things that I'm going to decide. And so, hey, I'll save some mental energy by going and, and giving these decisions to somebody else, delegating this to somebody else, which I think is really neat because we don't often hear that. We don't often hear about how these decisions we're making outside of our business can affect our business and our work and how much energy we have for that. So it's, it, you think I, about, I, like, I love Steve that you he used to wear the same thing to work every day. Why? To minimize decision fatigue, right? He had more important decisions to make. He did not want to worry about like what jeans and t-shirt he was picking out. Mark Zuckerberg does the same thing. A lot of high performers eat the same thing every day. All to minimize decision fatigue. It makes a lot of sense. I also really like that you brought up creating habits as a way to, to make things easier for us, not having to make that sort of decision. And you brought up exercise. I swam in college and our season went from, oh gosh, I don't know, September to February, let's say. And when we were there, it was, you were swimming once a day, at least maybe twice a day, but I knew what time I was going to practice. It was, the decision was already made for me. I knew I was going to practice that day. I wasn't going to miss it. I was going to show up, be there for a couple of hours. Like I didn't have to think about it. And it always surprised all of us when the season was over because now it was a chore to go to the gym. I have to yeah, make time, that time to go work go. out. Exactly. And so it, it, I think it totally comes back to not having to decide to, to work out when I was in season. It was a decision that was already made. This is something I was going to do. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. So I showed up. And so it's thinking, how can we apply that, those principles, to our business? How can I decide that, that these focus, efficient actions, after we figure out exactly what actions we want to take, how can I just make those a no ifs, ands, or buts about it? I'm going to do it. They become this behavior that's totally, I actually um, was kind of like whining to my coach recently about how I've personally gotten a little bit out of the habit of working out. And her advice to me was like, because I don't really like normally do classes. Like I'm a runner. Traditionally, I like to work out at home, whatever. And her advice to me was like, sign up for a class. Have it be a non-negotiable, mm -hmm. right? Where like people are expecting you to be there. You put money down for it, whatever, right? But um you know, create exactly what you said. Like it was, it's created it being decided for you. So then you're just showing up. This comes back to creating conditions of inevitable success. And so creating people around you, uh, I thought I, this, I realized the other day, if, if we go ahead, like for example, this, this talk show, I had been talking about it for a while that I actually wanted to do this. I wanted to get on Blab and I wanted to start talking to amazing women. And then I kind of just put it off, right? Because I didn't tell anybody that I wanted to do it. I, it was just kind of like that thing in my head until one day I was like, you know what? I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it next Wednesday. And then I told someone and then I told a second person. And all of a sudden I couldn't back out because I had told people I was going to do it. I see, I saw the same thing from, from, from um, one of my good friends. She does this ch like a challenge. And as soon as you tell people about the challenge, now you have to do it. You have to show up. And so it's it's kind of creating that condition for whatever it is that you want to do, saying, yeah, I'm going to do it. And I'm going to tell everyone about it. I'm going to put it out there because I know that if I put it out there, I'm going to show up. So it's figuring out like what makes something easy yeah, for like you Yeah, like knowing yourself well enough, right? Like I, I very much operate from the place exactly. that you just described. Like I'll almost always put out a challenge before I've even created it. I'll put out a program before I've even created it, everything, because that is like, I know myself that I'll never not show up for that, but I will back out of it. <laughs> Can I pause you? Can I really quickly? I just want to say that before I started a business and got in this world, I had no idea that people created a <laughs> challenge or a program like while they had put it out. I thought it was done months in advance. Like it was all ready to go. And then I start realizing I'm like, no, people create it like day before weeks, but like whatever. But it's, it's, 
It's so funny, but because it's true, it ties into that. Well, no, it's out there, so it's happening. So I'm going to create it. Yes, and it's like knowing what things that you can put in place. Like if you're someone that you know you're going to show up for that, put that in place. Like hold yourself to it. When I hated Periscope, I would email my newsletter and tell them when I was getting on Periscope because that Mm -hmm. was the only way I knew I was going to force myself to show up. Mm, I love it. All right. So I want to switch it a little bit because a lot of people that are listening to us live and that are joining the recording have huge dreams. And so I want to know what advice or what pieces of wisdom or I wish I would have known. Uh, I love this question. I have two. Um, The first is there is no magic bullet. There is no magic pill. There is no roadmap. (laughs) There is no one way to 100K business, right? Uh, I actually mm-hmm. really thought for a while like that I just didn't have the secret. Like why wasn't anyone telling me the secret, right? Like, just one thing, right? <laughs> um, and I think, you know, sometimes in the coaching world, that's the message, you know, like just do it this way and you'll find mm-hmm. success. And I think like if I could tell new entrepreneurs anything, it's that there is no secret, <laughs> which is like both terrifying and empowering right it's terrifying because it's like well I just thought I was gonna figure out the secret and then it was gonna work like that's a bummer but it's really empowering Mm -hmm. because then you don't have to listen to anyone but yourself which is what goes into my second point which is listen to no one but yourself advice from everyone let everyone Mm -hmm. else be a mirror to you let them give you information let them hold you accountable listen to no one but yourself like my intuition has never, ever, ever, ever steered me wrong in my business, but other people have when I've given up my intuition or given up my power, right? What will never steer you wrong is standing in your own power and listening to your intuition. So if there's one business tool that you can't survive without, it's intuition. And I really believe that so strongly. How powerful is that? My intuition has never steered me wrong, but other right? people have. It's, it is. It's such a powerful statement. And, and and I love that you're bringing it up right now and saying that, like, figure out what it is that, that you want to create and why you want to create that. And I think something that's important there that I've realized lately is then go ahead and give yourself permission um, yeah. to create it. Listen, take the I, action from your I, intuition, right? Yeah. I have noticed myself having to say to somebody else, oh, this is something, this is an idea I have for something I want to put out there or for a program that I want to create. And this is how I want to do it. But you know, like, I don't know, like, could that work? Can I do it? Like, what? and it's like, I'm looking for permission to create the program I want to create to have the business that I want to have. And so it's not only figuring out, okay, listen to your intuition. What do you like? What works for you? How do you connect with your audience? How can you bring that secret sauce of you to your business, but then also giving yourself permission to create whatever you want to create. The possibilities are endless. Yeah. And you can I had do a client it. recently. She, um, and I've been working together for a little while and she, um, at the beginning of our time together, very much depended on me for a lot, right? Like everything was like, can you look at this? Can you, and through our work together, she's really like found that she doesn't need to do that. And she put out something the other day, like didn't even tell me about it. Right. And so like, you know, as a coach, that could be threatening to me, right? I could be like, oh, she doesn't really need me anymore. But it was like the most exciting moment of my week because I was like, she is in her power, right? Like she listened to her intuition. She doesn't give a shit what I think. Like, yes, 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 right? Like that is so amazing. Not because I don't have valuable advice to offer or not because I'm not a great coach, right? But because she she has tapped in so much to her intuition that she doesn't need a valuable advice she needs to take action and that is amazing i think that's a, all you need to know that you are a great coach right because that's exactly what a great coach would do is is empower you somebody else to go listen to their intuition and build the business that's right for them and so that lets you know you're like yeah look i've i've helped you, guided you to step into your power enough that you can make these big, exciting decisions by listening. Totally. To and like a coach can help you, right? Like if you have this idea, they can help you birth it. They can help you create smart strategy around it. All of these great things. Mm-hmm. But what they can't help you do is like get that intuitive nudge. Like I can't listen to your intuition for you. Like only you can do that. Right. So it's so cool when you get to like see that happen. Because for me, I think 
that's when my clients make quantum leaps. That's when everything changes. Like when they have that moment where they're like, I'm in my power, I'm in my intuition, like that's when stuff happens. And how do you help your clients get to that place of listening? I think it's like a couple of things. Like one, just again, the magic bullet thing, like really realizing there's not that thing. I think almost every client that's ever come to me has had some thoughts around that, right? Like had some belief that if they just followed this roadmap or did whatever, that they would get successful. So like helping them see that there are smart ways to success, but there is not one way. And there is the way that works Mm -hmm. for them. And I think like challenging them to stand in their power, like being a mirror when they're not. Um, We don't realize so often when we give away our power, but when someone reflects that back to us, like when, you know, say a client comes to you and says like, I want to know if you think this is going to be successful. Oh my God, beautiful opportunity to be a mirror and be like, why would I know that more than you? Right? Like reflecting to them every time that they're not holding power for themselves, I think is the most powerful thing we can do as coaches. Because as soon as you see yourself doing that, you get to change it. But the hard part is like noticing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, becoming aware of it. And recognizing these things. And I think another thing about what is so important about just saying there's no magic bullet, there's no one road to success, is that sometimes somebody else's road to success doesn't align with our values or the life we want to live or the work we want to create. And so it's very possible that their road to success, you're not following it and taking the action that they took because it doesn't feel good to you. It's not what you want to create. And so telling people, hey, no magic bullet, however you want to do it can be done is kind of allowing that possibility to open up and say, okay, well, maybe there is something that feels better to me. And maybe that's what I need. Yeah. And then let's create like smart strategies around that. Right. But not like one doesn't have to come before the other. Like I you know, for me, challenges are a big part of my business. I love content. I love to give free challenges. Like I have a couple of clients that are like, I'm so not in for that. Like that is just not my jam. Like I'm not in. That's okay. Like I'm not, I don't hold this belief that challenges are the way to create success. Right. So it's like, okay, then what does work for them? And then let's create smart strategy around it, but not like well, you're not going to be successful if you're not doing it my way, right? <laughs> right. That's very. That would be very disempowering if someone told you that. And it was like, oh, you don't do it this one way, you're just not going to be successful. So I want to I wanna know, we have a couple more questions for you before I open it to any questions for anybody watching live. Um, but one of the ones that I love to ask, what study or learning or course has had the biggest influence and impact in your work? What's made Ooh. the biggest difference for you? Oh, gosh, that's like a really good question. Um, yeah, hmm. yeah, I don't There's know. There's a lot of them, huh? I think, um, <laughs> I love Mike Dooley, um, of leveraging the universe notes from the universe. Um, I like his style a lot. I learn a lot from him. Probably the first thing I would say that really impacted me, um, was Neil Donald Walsh's Conversations with God. Um, It's a three-part series. Um, I think I read it when I was like maybe 17 or 18. Um, And that like changed my life and kind of opened my world up to this whole thought of like, we're only acting from two places, which is love or fear. And that's kind of where I formed this rule that like if I'm scared of anything, I do it anyway. Um, So I still read conversations with God probably at least once a year. Um, so I'd say his work like foundationally was most impactful for me in a lot of ways. And then I really like to think that like, I don't have like one thing. I just think that I've been really blessed to like have a lot of different educational experiences, mental health counseling, MBA. Um, and I really try to like mesh all of that. Like I try to be a versatile learner and a versatile leader. Um, but if I had to cite two, I would say probably those two continue to have the biggest impact on me. And as you learn and continue to learn and continue to to study from them and get to mesh all of these different things that you've already learned, how do you manage that, this desire to learn and to grow and to build with 
taking action and going ahead and saying, I know enough to do something. I think that can often trick us is I don't know enough yet. I have to keep learning. And so how do you balance that part of your time with, okay, I can learn, but I also need Ooh, to that's such action. a good question. I think it's kind of like about um... – like I try not to learn from a place of need, if that makes sense. Like when I catch myself being like, I need to learn whatever. I got to like check myself a little and be like, what do I already know about this? Like what, like, could I make this work if I want to? Always yes. Right. Like, you know, there's nothing like, I don't have to take any course. I don't need to do that. But when I'm like jazzed about something, I'm like, oh man, I'd love to learn more about that. Or like, um, you know, that really kind of like excites me. Like that could really further my business. Like when I'm in that place, I'm good. Like I'll read all night or, you know, take that for kind of course. But I think like where we get tripped up is feeling like I must do this to go to the next level. What you must do to go to the next level is up level your mindset, right? <laughs> yes. And I think that's also the key to finishing any book or study or course that you take on is not feeling like you needed it to be successful, but rather that you wanted to do it because it was interesting and fun. Yeah. And something also, you were I think about. like not getting shiny object syndrome has been huge for me. Um, like really trying to stay away from that. I have um, one mentor that I work with that I really um, – cherish her opinion and her feedback and her advice. And I try not to get myself too confused by listening to a lot of other people. So pick your mentor very carefully and be very smart about who that is and make sure they embody what is important to you. Like my mentor for me, like she embodies integrity and impact. And those are the things that are important to me. Um, so I'm like almost committed to that course of study, if that makes sense. Like I think a lot about like, it's almost like a diet. Like if I did paleo, today and then low calorie the next day and then whatever um vegan the next day like I'm not gonna see results like I kind of have to stick to just paleo or just vegan or whatever um so I kind of think about that in a learning format too like I'll probably have a different mentor at some point and we'll learn in a different way but for right now I need to like focus on the thing in front of me instead of getting shiny object syndrome and thinking I need to learn from 15 people I love that you tied that right back into getting results. You said, if I keep switching between different things, I'm not going to get the results that I want to see and how you can apply that to all these different facets of your lives, which is, is really, really great. So I'm going to go ahead and open up the floor to any questions from anybody that is watching us live. And uh, while we are waiting for any questions to come in, I'll ask you one more that I have for you. Uh, I want to know what you consider to be the most important quality or skill for Ooh, a great leader. Um, this is such a good question. I would say, like, for me, versatility um, is probably the most important leadership quality I see because I think so often we're not leading the people in front of us. We're, we're trying to be a certain type of leader, and that never works out. So for me, it's about, like, being a versatile enough leader and a versatile enough, you know, professional coach person, whatever – that I can show up and lead the person in front of me, that they don't have to adhere to a certain type of leadership for me to be successful with them, that I have to be, um, you know, out of my own stuff enough to make sure that I'm showing up as the type of leader they need to get motivation, results, whatever, not that I'm showing up as the type of leader that I think I should be or that I'm an ego. So for me, versatility and being out of ego by far the most important. Something I really like about, about that is almost being able to get on somebody else's map, right? Which is something that's very important about, about being a good coach is being able to put all of your thoughts away, like the way that you think, the way that you've experienced the world, patterns that you've ingrained into your into your brain, being able to set that aside and get on somebody else's map and how they see the world so that you can connect with them enough mm -hmm. to be able Absolutely, to Absolutely, right? Like what works for me leadership-wise doesn't work for someone else or vice versa. Like someone might respond to like a good like kick in the butt. Someone else might respond to like hand-holding, whatever. Like we all get motivated in different ways. So assuming that like if I just show up in this way, everyone's going to be successful is just like never going to work. <laughs> Mm, absolutely. So we have a question that just came in from Nicole. How did you go about finding? Um, my mentor. Great um, question, by the way. So she, um, it was just someone I watched 
online for a while. She has a podcast. So um, she gives out a ton of free content. So I had interacted kind of, I think I did a course that she hosted and really had a lot of experiences with her prior to deciding to work with her, which was really important to me. Um, I show her, saw her show up repeatedly as the type of woman that I desire to be. And that's what was like a heck yes for me. Like, um, and I think that's like such an important thing to think about when you're picking a mentor is not like, what are the results that they're promising you, but how are, what type of woman are they showing up as repeatedly? And is that who you want to be? Right. Not that you want to like emulate them, but like, are their qualities consistent with yours? Like, I think that I have such a great relationship and rapport with my mentor because the, we value the same things. Um, not because she's promised me one singular result, right? But because she and I have the same set of values and she continuously asks me to play at a bigger level. So finding someone that shares similar values is obviously ahead of you, you know, in whatever capacity, right? Um, has done some of the work that you desire to do. And then that, you know, calls you to play a bigger game because they're already doing it, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they naturally stretch you into that next space and that next level. And I, I really like that you mentioned, okay, not necessarily what results are you going to provide me or promise me, um, but but who are you? And, and do I want to be that type of person, which comes into, uh, I, you know, that quote of, of you are... What is it? You are the the yeah, average of the five people, people that you hang out with most. Yeah, which I think it's so true because when you start to think about, it, you're like, do I take on different qualities, different phrases, different words that the people I hang out with the most say? And for me, I'm like, absolutely. And you start to notice that, and so it's like, who do I want to surround myself with? Because if I'm going to start seeing them act in a certain way, behave in a certain way, I'm going to gradually gravitate towards that. Yeah, and, and to you know, the thing with the mentors, myself. it's even more powerful than like a friendship because you are effectively deciding to let this person influence you and your business. That is a tremendous decision, right? Mm -hmm. Like I don't take that lightly because as I was telling you, like I don't listen to anyone in my business, but me, but if I'm going to decide that someone's going to influence my decisions, it is going to be a huge decision. I'm not going to take it lightly at all. And it's not going to be just because they promised to do like one thing, right? It's going to be about who they are as a person. Mm -hmm. And that comes back to being ruthless and being intentional, intentional about who you let into your life. So really deciding like, what am I letting into my life through what mediums, what information, what people, who, all of that, and being very intentional Absolutely. about who I that agree. is. Okay. I just love it. All right. So if you don't have any more questions, then I'm going to go ahead and turn the floor over to you one more time, Lacey, and ask you to please tell us where we can find you, any websites, programs, social medias, and just anything else yeah, that you would love Yeah, definitely. Well, thank you know. so much, first of all. This was so enjoyable. Like, I love talking about this stuff. I feel like you asked great questions. I'm so excited. We were kind of able to, like, dive into this and that you have me here. So thank you. Um, where you can find me, my business is A Lit Up Life. My website is www.alitaplife.com. Um, where I am the most is in my Facebook group, which is the Lit Up and Loaded Entrepreneur. Um, yeah, that's kind of it. That's where you can find me. I'd love to have you join the community. I feel like um, it's a super strong community, very supportive. And I just really, that's where I love to connect with my people and love to give away a ton of free value, free advice, free content. So if you are in need of that, come join us there. I am in Lacey's community and I can completely attest to the fact that she does give away a ton of free content, a ton of free value. She's super supportive all the time and it's a wonderful place to be. So definitely check it out. Uh, thank you so much, Lacey, for being with us today, for joining me. This has been absolutely fantastic. Um, and I want to thank you all joining us live um, and everybody that's that's watching the replay or, or listening or iTunes. Uh, again, you can join the Fearless Film Society and grab the show notes, including transcripts, uh, takeaways by just coming over to my blog at kellyelizabethscott.com. So Lacey, one more time, thank you so, so much for being here for everybody listening live. We will see you next Wednesday Bye. at 7 Central.